Welcome to Bhaskara Labs. Here, we take cloud concepts that often seem complex and break them down into simple, hands-on learning experiences. Think about this for a moment. You've just launched your very first EC2 instance inside AWS. You install a web server, configure your application, and assign a public IP address. Everything looks good, until you try to open it in your browser. Instead of seeing your web page, you're greeted with nothing. No connection, no response. Why does this happen? Isn't the public IP enough? This is a common situation many beginners face when working with AWS for the first time. By default, resources inside a VPC are isolated from the internet. They can't talk to the outside world unless you explicitly give them a way out. And that's where today's topic comes in, the Internet Gateway, or IGW. It's the bridge that connects your private AWS environment to the wider internet. And without it, your workloads remain invisible to the world. So in this video, we're going to start from scratch. We'll build a VPC, launch an EC2 instance, and test what happens before and after attaching an internet gateway. By the end, you'll see exactly why this component is so important and how to configure it properly. So stay tuned and let's begin our journey into AWS networking with the Internet Gateway. What is Internet Gateway? An Internet Gateway, or IGW, is a core AWS networking component that makes Internet connectivity possible inside a VPC. It is horizontally scaled and fully managed, meaning you don't have to worry about performance or capacity. AWS automatically takes care of it. The Internet Gateway's primary role is to connect your VPC to the Internet, enabling both inbound traffic, like users accessing your web server, and outbound traffic, like your EC2 instance downloading updates. It is also highly available across multiple availability zones, so you don't have to configure failover or redundancy yourself. An IGW supports both IPv4 and IPv6 traffic, ensuring modern compatibility for applications. And here's the most important part. If you don't attach an Internet Gateway, your VPC stays completely isolated from the Internet no matter how many public IPs you assign. Why we need an Internet Gateway So why do we actually need an Internet Gateway in AWS? The first reason is to host public websites or applications. If you're running a web server or any service that needs to be accessible from the Internet, you must have an Internet Gateway. Second, even if your workloads don't serve the public, many of them still need to download software packages and updates. Without an IGW, your EC2 instance cannot reach external repositories or services. Third, the Internet Gateway is what allows public IP communication. Assigning a public IP alone is not enough. It only works when the IGW is in place. Fourth, it enables external users or customers to connect to your AWS hosted services, whether that's a website, an API, or an application. And finally, it allows your workloads inside AWS to connect with external APIs and third-party services, something that is very common in modern cloud applications. In short, without an internet gateway, your VPC stays isolated. With it, your workloads gain the connectivity they need to function in the real world. To really understand how the Internet Gateway works, let's go through a step-by-step -step workflow. Step 1, we'll create a VPC, a subnet, and a route table as the foundation of our network. Step 2, we'll launch an EC2 instance inside that subnet, install a simple HTTP web server, and make sure it's running. Step 3, we'll test the HTTP connection before attaching an internet gateway. 
Even though the instance has a public IP, the page will fail to load. Step 4. We'll create and attach an internet gateway to our VPC. Step 5. We'll update the route table by adding a default route, 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, pointing to the IGW. And finally, in step 6, we'll test the HTTP connection again. This time, the web page will load successfully, proving that the internet gateway is working as expected. Our first step is to create the foundation of the network. We begin by creating a new VPC with the CIDR block 10.0.0.0 slash 16. This gives us a large private address space to work with. Next, inside this VPC, we'll create a public subnet using the CIDR 10.0.1.0 slash 24. This subnet will host our EC2 instance later on. Finally, we'll create a route table and associate it with the subnet. At this stage, the route table only contains the local route, which means our resources can communicate inside the VPC, but not yet with the internet. This sets up the basic networking environment we need before moving to the next step. Step 2 is about launching our EC2 instance and setting up a simple web server. We'll start by launching an EC2 instance using Amazon Linux 2 with the instance type t2.micro, which is free tier eligible. Be sure to enable a public IP address so the instance can be accessible once the internet gateway is configured. For security, configure the security group to allow inbound traffic on port 80 which is required for HTTP connections. To simplify the setup, we'll add a user data script in the EC2 launch menu. This script will automatically install and start the Apache HTTP server as soon as the instance boots. It will also create a simple web page that we'll use for testing. By the end of this step, our web server is already running, but without an internet gateway, it still cannot be accessed from outside.
In step 3, we test the HTTP connection before attaching an internet gateway. We begin by copying the public IP address of our EC2 instance. Next, open a web browser and paste the IP address into the IP address bar, accessing HTTP colon slash slash EC2 public IP. The result is that the page will fail to load. This failure is expected because even though our instance has a public IP, the VPC remains isolated. Without an internet gateway, there is no path for traffic between the VPC and the internet. Step four is about creating and attaching an internet gateway to our VPC. From the VPC console, navigate to Internet Gateways and choose Create Internet Gateway. Give it a name tag for easy identification. Once created, we'll attach the Internet Gateway to our VPC with the CIDR block 10.0.0.0 slash 16. At this point, the Internet Gateway is active and linked to our VPC but the routes have not yet been updated, so external traffic still cannot flow. Step 5 is to update the route table so our subnet can use the Internet Gateway. We open the Route Tables section and edit the routes. Here we add a new route with the destination set to 0.0.0.0/0, which represents all Internet traffic. For the target, we choose the Internet Gateway we just created. With this change, any traffic destined for the internet will now be routed through the IGW. Step 6 is the final verification, testing our web server after attaching the Internet Gateway. Go back to the browser tab where we previously tried accessing the EC2 public IP. Simply refresh the page, and this time, the web page loads successfully. This confirms that our route through the Internet Gateway is working, and our EC2 instance is now reachable from the Internet.
And that brings us to the end of this hands-on tutorial on the AWS Internet Gateway. We began by creating the foundation with a VPC, subnet, and route table. Then we launched an EC2 instance, installed a simple HTTP server, and tested connectivity before adding an internet gateway. As we saw, the connection failed, exactly what we expected, since the VPC was still isolated. After that, we created and attached the internet gateway, updated our route table to direct internet traffic through it, and finally tested again. This time, the HTTP page loaded successfully, proving that our EC2 instance could now communicate with the Internet. The key takeaway here is that an Internet gateway is essential for enabling public connectivity in AWS. Without it, your VPC stays private and isolated. With it, your workloads can reach the outside world whether to serve public websites, connect with external users, or access APIs and software updates. I hope this walkthrough gave you both the conceptual understanding and the practical steps to set up and test an IGW on your own. If you found this tutorial helpful, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Bagascara Labs. Your support really helps us keep creating more in-depth, hands-on cloud tutorials for you. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.